How's it going everyone? Javita here with a beacon crash course type video. <laughs> I've actually made one pretty much by the same exact title and I've covered this a number of times in the past. However, I've had quite a few questions relating to beacons and especially with the PS4 launch, uh, I guess basically today, at least from my perspective. Uh, yeah, I figured a rerun or a redo of this video is in order, and I will be using a controller, which uh, I'm still learning a bit myself, but uh, just to give a better uh, point of view for console players. So, so starting off, Beacons uh, protects your stuff from not only world regeneration, but from other players taking your stuff, basically, or destroying your build. So they're very... Uh, integral to the game, very important. The first step is to craft a campfire. So starting off, you can open your inventory using square and then head over to handcrafting. You can either use the joystick and come over here and hit X, or you can use the bumpers to switch between the tabs. Once you're at handcrafting, you can either use the right joystick to scroll down, or you can also use the D-pad to page through the different recipes. So right down here is the campfire. All you need is two trunks and some foliage. So go ahead and craft that. Head over to your inventory, and you can use the triggers to place things either on the left or right hand, depending on which trigger you use. And there we go. So this really bright white box, it's a little bit uh, disorienting, but this is the area that the campfire will protect. So go ahead and place this down. And notice that it doesn't matter where I place it inside of the square, it still reserves the same squares. So the world is pre-divvied up into a grid of plots. And to give a good example is if I look right here, you can see that this is actually placing two plots at the same time. There's one above and then one below. This is so that if you place a campfire right on the border between two plots, uh, you won't have some kind of funny business going on like uh, the walls are plotted, but the floor of your house is not plotted. So just go ahead and stick that into the corner and yeah, my Agility is a bit too fast. And there you go. We have a campfire and you can see the area that is reserved. So this is called builder mode or beacon view. And you can hit up on the D-pad to turn it on and off. So looking at your campfire, you notice that it only says one hour and 59 minutes. And so that is when this expires. If you break this, the campfire disappears and you are refunded your plots. And just for future reference, you can see your plots listed right here. So I've used 835 of my 876 plots. But uh, as you can see, you cannot reclaim your campfire. So you can go ahead and place another one. And uh, next up, you'll want to craft a beacon. That is what will allow you to reserve your area long term. Uh, campfires are disposable. They only last two hours. And so they really cannot be trusted to keep your stuff safe. You also cannot add plots onto campfires. You can only place an additional campfire, uh, which is not an ideal situation. So next up, the tutorial will guide you through the process of making your first crafting table which simply takes five trunks, which turns into 10 pieces of timber. So make some timber, come down here and make a crafting table. Head back over to your inventory and place that somewhere on your action bar. It's good to note that you can only place interactable objects like crafting tables inside a beacon. So if I try to place it out here, it'll warn me that I cannot do this and this is really for your own benefit as anything outside of a beacon can be claimed by another player or will eventually regenerate. Go ahead and plop this down and now this will give us more crafting recipes. So hit the square again to interact with this, head over to recipes and here is the beacon control. So this is a little bit more complex but it's not very hard. It does take timber, foliage and some rock. So I already have some crafted. Uh, normally these would take 20 seconds to craft, so they're not instant like handcrafting is. 
But once you have your beacon, again, put that on your action bar and you can either place it inside of your campfire to expand what you currently have or you could place it off somewhere by itself to create a whole new claimed area of land. Uh, just keep in mind that the two different claimed areas of land will have to be fueled independently. So it's generally best to just go ahead and place it inside of your beacon. So normally I would have to place beacon fuel into this, but since I have the Gleamcom membership, it's auto-fueled for 23 weeks, which is the duration of my membership. Uh, so in order to craft the beacon fuel, just go over to handcrafting, come down here, and you see that you need 10 foliage to be able to craft beacon fuel. So just run around, grab some leaves, And there we go, we got 10. Head back over to handcrafting and craft our beacon fuel. And now you can interact with your beacon. Head over to fuel and we can drag and drop our beacon fuel down here. And I'll tell you that I'll add three weeks, six days, uh, essentially a month of fuel. There are more advanced fuels that you can craft later on that last for longer periods of time. As you can see inside the user interface for the beacon control, there's all sorts of information up here. You can see the name of the beacon, hit X to expand it, and you can see its coordinates, who owns it, how many plots are attached, uh, the total beacon prestige, which that is a measure of the value of all the blocks inside of the beacon. Uh, down below, there's the coin box with some additional information. If you have a prestigious enough build, you can become a settlement, at which point anybody that visits your settlement will generate some footfall, which will end up in this coin box. And then down even further, there's settlement details right here, and it kind of gives you an idea of why your beacon is not considered a settlement, or it will give you information on the settlement if you are a valid settlement. You can also come down here and set this as your home and whether or not strangers can warp into the beacon. By default, strangers can warp into your beacon. Uh, this is so that if you're building like a very large town and somebody saves the location of it, they can actually warp into your town instead of being thrown to the outskirts of it. Coming over here, there's the permissions tab. This allows you to add permissions to any of your friends. So I can come over to this friend and allow them to be a builder, which allows them to place and remove basic blocks. Over here, I can make them a worker, which allows them to access storage and craft with crafting machines. However, with this permission, they cannot remove interactable blocks like storage machines and whatnot. And then over here, there's Engineer, which allows citizens to place and remove interactable blocks such as crafting machines. You can award one or all of these permissions. As you can see right here, it does give you a warning basically saying that if you give somebody permissions to your beacon, they could walk off with your stuff or damage your build. So as you can see, I can give him access to everything, or maybe I only want him to be able to use my crafting machines. Uh, just keep in mind that with the worker permission, they can still access your storage and remove and place items. And then finally over here, there you can change the color of your beacon plots. This it only affects the color when you have builder mode activated. So I could put this piece of gleam in here, apply color, and as you can see, it changed the color of the plots. So, very nice. So as you can see, this is a pretty small space to live in. Chances are you're going to want to be a little bit bigger than this. So you'll need to come over to a crafting table and scroll up to the basic gear. And here you have the beacon plotter and the beacon plot remover. So the plotter adds uh, plots to a beacon and the remover removes plots from a beacon. As you can see here, it only takes timber and foliage for both of these. I already have some crafted, so let's go ahead and come over here. Oh nice, I already have them equipped. 
And so right here you can see this big huge plus that lets you know on which side of the plot you're adding to. So just go ahead and click and it adds a plot. A really nice thing to note is that these have a really long range on them so I can come way out here and kind of like building with Legos I can add these things all over the place and it's a lot easier to see what's going on if you're doing it from a distance rather than right there in your face but certainly uh, it comes down to user preference of how you like to do things. So very nice. And if we want to remove plots, it's very similar except you have to hold it down for a few seconds to actually remove it, which is pretty nice uh, because it prevents you from accidentally removing plots with just a single click. And there we go, we removed all of our plots. And if we wanted to actually remove this beacon altogether, we just have to break the beacon control once we've removed all the beacons. However, as you can see, uh, it looks like we removed all of the plots, but for some reason it's still not letting us remove the beacon control. And if you remember, the campfire places two plots at the same time, so there actually is another plot down here somewhere. So kind of dig down a little bit. And, oh, there we go. And there we go, we removed the last plot. Uh, you can either jump and place blocks underneath you to get back out. Or if you have a grapple, you can grapple out. So, very nice. Now, when I come over here, I can start to damage the beacon control, and when it finally breaks, it will remove the last plot, and the beacon, or the protected area, will be removed. Uh, anything left inside will then be vulnerable, like this crafting table. Uh, the campfire will possibly go out. I guess maybe... I don't know, that'd be a good experiment, see if the campfire takes over. Nope, okay, so yeah, the campfire now says expired. This is pretty much garbage unless you place another beacon on top of it, at which point it will relight, but you cannot pick up and replace campfires. And so there you go, that is pretty much a crash course on beacons. Uh, another th good thing to note here, turn on beacon view. Here we go. So here is somebody else's beaconed area, and I don't have permission, so I can't do anything with it. Uh, but since this person has plotted right here, that means I cannot plot above or below him because that vertical space is reserved. Uh, that prevents somebody coming along and saying, oh, I want to build a floating castle right on top of your settlement and blocking out all of the sunlight or encasing your house in, say, a big huge box or anything uh, nefarious like that. So um, that is a good thing to note is that you cannot plot above or below another beacon, even if it's your own beacon. So let's say I was building here and I wanted a different beacon to be underneath it. Uh, this simply does not work. Uh, it would be kind of handy to be able to give different permissions for different areas, but you... But in order to accomplish that, they would have to be in two different vertical spaces or, or let's say one beacon right here and then another beacon over here in a different spot, just not above or below. And one additional side note, there was somebody that was confused by the objective that asked you to play something like 30 blocks in your beacon and they were interpreting as literally interacting with the beacon and placing blocks into it. Uh, it rather, it's actually talking about placing blocks inside of the protected area of the beacon. It's basically trying to get you to build your very first home. Uh, the nice thing is, is that even things like torches count. So you could just sit there and 
place and break and replace the same torch over and over if you didn't want to put down uh, some serious permanent roots just yet. So anyway, I think that covers beacons pretty well. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more like this, and if there's anything you didn't like, please let me know down below. Also, if you like my channel and want to get cool perks, check out my Patreon page. Until next time, peace. Thank <laughs> you.